Now that we've talked more generally about atoms and molecules, I want to focus in on organic compounds. Organic compounds are defined as molecules that are containing both carbon and hydrogen. So if you have anything that's got carbon and hydrogen in it, we can consider that to be organic. Organic compounds are really important because these are the building blocks of living things. You have to have organic compounds in order to build up the structure of organisms and also to allow them to function. Important things like proteins, RNA and DNA, fats, carbohydrates, vitamins, these are all organic compounds and without them we have no structure or ability to function. Now if we had compounds that contain only carbon and hydrogen and nothing else, those are called the hydrocarbons. And they're actually not very useful for living things. They're nonpolar. Remember that a carbon hydrogen bond shares evenly and is nonpolar. So they don't interact with water. They tend to be gases at room temperature, which doesn't work very well for getting molecules to come together to create a living thing. And hydrocarbons don't participate in very many different types of reactions. You can burn them, but that's really about it. In order to be able to make more complex and interesting and reactive molecules that can do things, we have to add something else to these hydrocarbons. And so we can add other types of atoms, nitrogens, phosphorus, oxygen, that will make them more interesting, make them more likely to be liquid or solid at room temperature, and to be able to participate in more reactions. These groups of other types of atoms are called functional groups. A functional group is an atom or a group of atoms that we can hook on to a carbon in place of a hydrogen that's going to make it more interesting and give it different properties. Functional groups tend to be polar, which will help molecules interact with water and allow them to participate in more different types of reactions. There are a few functional groups that I want you to be able to recognize and name. And the reason I want you to know these is so that we can talk about them as we're talking about more complicated organic compounds. A hydroxyl group is simply an oxygen with a hydrogen that you can plug onto a carbon in place of one of the hydrogens. Hydroxyl groups are polar. They help molecules interact with each other and dissolve in water. And hydroxyl groups are found in a number of organic compounds including carbohydrates, proteins, and nucleic acids. And nucleic acids are RNA and DNA. The second functional group I want you to know is a carbonyl group. A carbonyl group is an oxygen that's double bonded onto a carbon. We find carbonyl groups in carbohydrates. The third group is called a carboxyl group, and it's sort of like a combination of a carbonyl and a hydroxyl. That's where one carbon has a double bond in the oxygen and an OH group attached to it. That whole thing is called a carboxyl group. Carboxyl groups are interesting because those oxygens can pull on the electrons so hard it can actually pull the electron away from a hydrogen ion and leaves a hydrogen ion and H plus floating around. Do you remember what we call molecules that can release hydrogen ions? Those are acids, and carboxyl groups are actually weak acids. They can release that hydrogen ion and change the pH of a solution. Because of this, sometimes we see a carboxyl group written as we see here with a carbon, the double bonded oxygen, and the O with a negative. That means it took the electron from the hydrogen and the hydrogen ions just floating around. Or sometimes we see it with the hydrogen written in. Either way is acceptable. Sometimes we even see carboxyl groups sort of written out as COOH instead of showing where those oxygens are bonded to the carbon. So that's another thing to watch for and be able to recognize as a carboxyl group. Carboxyl groups are important in proteins and in fatty acids. We'll be seeing both of those a little bit later. The next group is an amino group. This is the only group that we look at that has a nitrogen in it. So if you see a nitrogen, you should automatically be thinking amino group. An amino group is a nitrogen with two hydrogen atoms on it. But nitrogen really likes to have a little bit of extra hydrogen there. So sometimes an amino group will bind to a third hydrogen and become an NH3 plus group 
Do you remember what we call molecules that will bind to hydrogen ion? Those are bases. An amino group acts as a weak base by binding to hydrogen ions. We find amino groups in proteins and in nucleic acids, or the RNA and DNA. The last group I want you to be familiar with is what's called the phosphoryl group or a phosphate group. A phosphoryl group is basically a phosphorus with a lot of oxygen around it. Now remember that oxygens love to steal electrons. So often in a phosphoryl group, the oxygens will steal some electrons and release a hydrogen ion. So phosphoryl groups, like carboxyl groups, are weak acids. And phosphoryl groups are really important in RNA and DNA. That's where we're going to be seeing those again. I want you to take a minute to look at the molecules that are on the screen right now. You're not expected to recognize what these molecules are, but I do want you to look at them and see if you can pick out any functional groups. Can you see any functional groups in here that you could maybe circle and name? All of the highlighted groups are functional groups. I highlighted the phosphoryl group in yellow-orange and the amino groups in blue. And all of the oxygen-containing groups I highlighted in purple. The lightest purple highlight the carboxyl groups. Remember, the carboxyl group is where we have a double-bonded oxygen and an OH group connected to the same carbon. So these are large, complicated functional groups. We have a couple of carbonyl groups here in the middle purple. That's just the double bonded oxygen connected to a carbon. And finally, we have a whole lot of hydroxyl groups. Hydroxyl groups are just an oxygen with a hydrogen that's bonded to a carbon.